in this video today we will see how generating functions can be used to solve the counting problems let us begin this is the first level video of generating functions so we are going to consider only ordinary generating functions we assume that binomial theorem is known to all the students general statement of binomial theorem is a plus b bracket raised to n is equal to summation of r goes from 0 to n n choose r a raised to n minus r b raised to r so here the binomial coefficient is n choose r in this expansion we observe that the coefficient of a raised to n minus r and b raised to r if suppose we take n is equal to 10 and r is equal to 3 we get 10 factorial upon 7 factorial upon 3 factorial which is 10 into 9 into 8 upon 3 into 2 into 1 we observe that there are three terms in the numerator and three terms in the denominator once we expand our n choose r notation so in general in n choose r we will have r brackets in the numerator r terms and exactly r terms in the denominator let us see the binomial expansion of 1 minus x raised to n we will have sigma r goes from 0 to n n choose r 1 raised to n minus r into minus x raised to r now 1 to the power of n minus r is 1 so we need not write it and then we separate minus x minus 1 into x then we will observe that the expansion looks like sigma r goes from 0 to n n choose r minus 1 raised to r x raised to r here the binomial coefficient of x raised to r is minus 1 raised to r n choose r in all the above discussion n is a natural number after we study calculus we can prove that the binomial theorem uh, works exactly similarly for n being real number today we will consider n as negative integer and we will try to figure out the binomial expansion suppose we take n is equal to minus 10 and r is equal to 3 so minus 1 raised to r n choose r will be minus 1 raised to 3 minus 10 choose 3 actually minus 10 choose 3 doesn't have any meaning in um, binomial expansion because how can we select three objects from minus 10 object it doesn't have any meaning however we are deliberately working on this because we wish to figure out what happens when the index is negative integer so if we write the binomial theorem exactly similar to the natural number we will get minus 1 raised to 3 minus 10 choose 3 and therefore we said if we are writing minus 10 choose 3 then there will be 3 brackets in the numerator and 3 brackets in the denominator with minus 1 raised to 3 leading coefficient is minus 1 then first term will be minus 10 then second term will be minus 10 minus 1 which is minus 11 and the third term will be minus 10 minus 2 which is minus 12 divided by 3 into 2 into 1 at this stage we will not be able to justify why we are doing this but we just look at the way suppose we write n choose r n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 like that r brackets divided by r factorial so r terms in the denominator exactly same rule we follow in case of negative integers we will get 12 into 11 into 10 upon 3 into 2 into 1 which is 12 choose 3 which is new notation which we will call as 10 elbow 3 so when the power is minus 10 we will consider the positive part of it that is 10 elbow 3 we call this notation as 10 elbow 3 it is little different than choose notation now if r is equal to 4 we will have minus 1 raised to 4 minus 10 minus 11 minus 12 minus 13 upon 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 which means we have 10 elbow 4 in general we can write if the power is negative integer which is minus n 1 minus x raised to minus n will be equal to sigma r goes from 0 and there is no upper limit to r because eventually we are creating a power series so we have to write as many terms as we want and then we have to put dot 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 because that power series is not going to stop as you can observe that 
माइनस टेन माइनस इलेवन माइनस थर ट्वेल्व माइनस थर्टीन एंड सो ऑन एज आर वैल्यू इन्क्रीजेस युअर टर्म्स इन द न्यूमरेटर एंड टर्म्स इन द डिनोमिनेटर विल इन्क्रीज सो इंडेक्स एन इज नैचुरल नंबर आफ्टर सम टाइम इट बिकम जीरो विच इज नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन इन दिस केस देर फॉर वी डो नॉट हैव द अपर लिमिट फॉर अवर सिग्मा वी हैव टू टेक एज मेनी टर्म्स एज वी वॉन्ट एंड इन स्टॉप सो सिग्मा आर वॉज फ्रॉम जीरो एन एल्बो आर एक्स रेस टू आर Now, if we replace x by opposite of x, so expansion of one plus x raised to minus n, we will have sigma r goes from zero to whenever we want to stop minus one raised to r n l o r x raised to r. So this is assuming that binomial expansion works for index negative integer, and as I said. After calculus, we will be able to show that even if it is a real number, binomial expansion exactly works like this. So, at the moment we are assuming it to be true without proof. Then, if this is true, then it has got some wonderful applications. Now, let us write down some expansions using this method that we have done right now. One minus x bracket raised to minus one, which means. 1 upon 1 minus x will be equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube dot dot dot. Now this is this can be looked at as a geometric progression, provided we have understood that if mod x is less than 1, then the summation of infinite G P happens to be equal to 1 upon 1 minus x, which is in line with what we are doing right now. 1 plus x raised to minus 1 will look like 1 minus x plus x square minus X cube and so on. One minus x bracket raised to minus two will look like two elbow zero x raised to zero, two elbow one x raised to one, two elbow two x raised to two, two elbow three x raised to three, and so on. So if we expand that elbow notation, we will find that the coefficients are one plus two x plus three x square plus four x cube, and so on. One plus x bracket raised to Minus three will look like three elbow zero x raised to zero minus three elbow one x raised to one plus three elbow two x raised to two minus three elbow three x raised to three and so on. So the coefficients will look like one minus three x plus six x square minus ten x cube plus dot dot. Now let us consider the ordinary generating function for infinite sequence. It looks like a power series. So let us Uh, create a notation g of x is equal to g zero plus g one x plus g two x square plus dot dot dot. That means whatever power of x that you look for, corresponding coefficient is g to the base whatever power you require. So g two is a coefficient of x square. G hundred will be coefficient of x raised to hundred and so on. So co corresponding sequence, if you wish to write. we will write it as g0 g1 g2 dot 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 is equivalent to the generating function g0 plus g1x plus g2x square and so on so let us look at some sequences suppose we want 0 0 0 dot 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 sequence so every term is zero the corresponding generating function will look like 0 plus 0x plus 0x square plus dot 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 which indeed is equal to zero if we want A sequence one comma zero 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 zero, then that corresponding generating function will be equivalent to one. Suppose we want three comma two comma one comma zero and all the terms after that zero, then corresponding generating function will be three plus two x plus x square plus zero x cube and so on. So it will look like three plus two x plus x square. Some of infinite geometric series can be similarly expressed as follows. Suppose we want sequence of one, 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 one. All the coefficients are one. Then corresponding generating function in expanded form will look like one plus x plus x square plus x cube and so on, which is equivalent to one upon one minus x. Of course, when we consider it as a geometric series, there is a condition: mod x should be less than one. If the sequence is one minus one, one minus one dot dot dot, then corresponding power series will look like one minus x plus x square minus x cube dot dot dot, and its corresponding 
generating function will be 1 upon 1 plus x. Similarly, if the sequence is 1 a a square a cube, then the corresponding generating function will be 1 upon 1 minus a x. For the sequence 1 0 1 0 1 dot dot dot, the corresponding generating function is going to be 1 upon 1 minus x square because we don't want the odd power terms of x, the value of the coefficient for x is 0, for x cube is 0. Therefore, 1 upon 1 minus x square is going to be the generating function. Okay, so having understood these basic generating functions and corresponding sequences, let us see now if we want to get few more sequences, how do we get it? Suppose we want the sequence 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, dot, dot, dot. The corresponding power series will be 2 plus 2x square plus 2x fourth plus so on, which is just a multiplication of <coughs> power series mentioned in power series 4 multiplied by 2. So, 2 into 1 upon 1 minus x square. The same sequence we can achieve by adding sequence 1 and sequence 2. So, when we add 1 upon 1 minus x plus 1 upon 1 plus x, we get 2 upon 1 minus x square, which is same as the sequence 5. So, we can perform the algebra of generating functions and we can correspondingly perform the algebra of sequence and then they match. That is what we are experiencing by uh, this scaling. If we multiply the sequence by a real number, the gen corresponding generating function also is multiplied. Now, suppose we want a generating function for the sequence 0, 0, 0, k times followed by 1, 1, 1, 1. So, it is as good as sequence 1, but there are k zeros before the first one, which means the corresponding power series is x raised to k plus x raised to k plus 1 and so on, which means you need to multiply by x raised to k. So, generating function for sequence 1, if it is multiplied by x raised to k, we get k zeros in the beginning. So, we can call it as right shifting. We are shifting the required sequence by k terms by adding k zeros before. So, right shifting by k terms. So, multiply by x raised to k. What more additional transformations which we can do? Let us consider differentiation <coughs> as a tool to generate a new sequence. Differentiating the sequence 1 which is 1 1 1 1 we get corresponding power series if we differentiate we will get the sequence 1 plus 2x plus 3x square and so on corresponding sequence is 1 2 3 dot 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 and if we differentiate 1 upon 1 minus x again we get 1 upon 1 minus x square so by differentiating the power series corresponding differentiating the generating function we get the desired sequences this is what is our observation now let us try to create a complicated sequence say for example 0 1 4 9 16 so this is a sequence where you have perfect squares starting from 0 then 1 4 9 16 and so on so next term will be 25 let us begin we will begin with sequence 1, which is 1, 1, 1, 1. Corresponding generating function is 1 upon 1 minus x. Now, if we differentiate, we get the generating function 1 upon 1 minus x bracket square. Corresponding sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, we will shift this sequence by adding a 0, which means we will multiply the generating function by x. Then we differentiate again. We get 1, 4, 9, 16. If we keep doing the same operation in on generating function, we are supposed to differentiate x upon 1 plus x bracket square. And hence, after differentiating, we get 1 plus x upon 1 minus x bracket cube. 
and then we want 0 to start with therefore right shifting by adding 1 0 which means multiplying the corresponding generating function by x. So for the sequence 0 1 4 9 16 we have corresponding generating function x into 1 plus x upon 1 minus x bracket q. Now let us look at the application of whatever work which we have done so far. What did we do? We wrote some sequence of numbers. We tried to find out the corresponding power series and corresponding to that power series we tried to write down a function in the short form. Uh, some many a times it is in the numerator upon denominator form. That means if we really perform the long division of numerator by the denominator, we are going to get quotient as our power series. Uh, one can check with the small uh, numerator and denominator. You can cross check performing a long division whether you keep getting the desired coefficients or not and you will find it. Okay, so let us see the application. We want Fibonacci sequence to be generated. What is Fibonacci sequence? By definition, first term is 0, which we call it as 0th term. Then second term F1 is 1. The next term is the summation of two previous terms. So Fn is given by Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2 for every n greater than equal to Two. So the sequence becomes 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21 and so on. Okay, so let us assume f of x, Fibonacci of function of x is equal to the coefficients f0 plus f1x plus f2x square plus f3x cube and so on. We need to find out what is the generating function for this Fibonacci sequence. So we need to find out what is f of capital F of x and the corresponding sequence is 0, 1, f0 plus f1, f1 plus f2, f2 plus f3 and so on. So let us break this required sequence into the smaller ones and add them. So because we want first term to be 0, let us keep first term of all the sequence is 0. We want second term to be 1. Okay, So we consider one sequence where 0 1 0 0 0 corresponding function is x. Then we consider second sequence 0 f0 f1 f2 f3 that means we have right shifted the Fibonacci sequence by adding one more zero in the beginning. That means we are multiplying the f of x by x. So if we want sequence zero f of a, f of sorry, if we want sequence zero f0, f1, f2, f3, the corresponding function would be x capital F of x. And then we write third sequence as 0, comma 0, f0, f1, f2. So corresponding generating function will be x square capital F of x. Now if we add all these three sequences, the corresponding elements of the sequences will get added, which means 0 plus 0 plus 0 is the first element, 1 plus f0 is going to be the second element, f0 plus f1 is third, f1 plus f2 is fourth and so on. So that is what precisely the sequence we wish to achieve. So correspondingly the generating functions will get added. So the overall generating function will be x plus x times f of x plus x square times f of x. Therefore f of x capital F of x can be written as x plus x times f of x plus x square times f of x. So capital F of x is equal to x upon 1 minus x minus x square. It also means that when we perform the long division of x by 1 minus x minus x square, the quotient will be coefficients which will follow Fibonacci sequence. Isn't it amazing? We just achieved the 
function for Fibonacci sequence. Okay. Now let us use this theory to solve counting problems. Let us solve around 9 problems using this theory so that we understand how to use generating functions to find the solution for counting problems. So consider various ways of selecting objects from the set A comma B comma C. In how many ways you can select 0 objects out of a comma b comma c in how many ways you can select one object in how many ways you can select two objects you are in how many ways you can select three objects this is the question which means either a is present in your selection or it is in, it is absent similarly b is present or b is absent and c is present or c is absent so generating function for a will be if a is absent 1 into x raised to 0. So the index 0 means a is absent and if a is present the index is 1. So 1 into x raised to 0 plus 1 into x raised to 1 which is 1 plus x is the generating function for a. Similarly generating function for b will be 1 plus x. Generating function for c will be 1 plus x and hence generating function for the problem is 1 plus x bracket q because and means multiplication or means addition. So 1 plus x, 1 means a is absent or a is present. So 1 plus x, b is absent or b is present. Generating function is 1 plus x and c is absent or c is present. Generating function is 1 plus x. But because of and in between, we are supposed to multiply and hence overall generating function for the problem will be 1 plus x bracket cube, which is 1 plus 3x plus 3x square plus x cube. Now, the moment we get this generating function with us, we are solving four problems simultaneously. Now, if we want to answer in how many ways you can select zero objects out of a comma b comma c, what we need to look at is the coefficient of x raised to 0 in the expansion of generating function for the problem. The coefficient is 1. Therefore, only in one way you can select none of them out of a comma b comma c. Suppose you want to select one object out of a comma b comma c. Then you have to look at the coefficient of x raised to 1 which is 3 which is correct and so on. This is easy problem but we are looking at it from generating point, uh, function point of view and hence we are getting all four correct answers by looking at the coefficients of the generating function for the problem. Okay, Let us make it little difficult. Find the number of ways of selecting r objects out of n objects. Okay, This is exactly same as above and therefore the answer is going to be n choose r. Very easy. Third problem is find the number of ways of selecting two objects from the set where you have two A's and one B. Okay, this is little complicated. So we have two A's and one B and we are supposed to select two objects. Okay, so let us write generating function for A. Okay, either no A is present that means x raised to 0 or 1a is present that means x raised to 1 or x raised to 2. So generating function for a will be 1 plus x plus x square. For b it will be 1 plus x. So overall generating function for this problem will be 1 plus x plus x square into 1 plus x which is 1 plus 2x plus 2x square plus x cube. So the answer for required question is coefficient of x square which is Find the number of ways of selecting four objects from multiset A, A, B, C, C, D. Okay. Generating function for A is 1 plus x plus x square. For B is 1 plus x. C is 1 plus x plus x square. And D is 1 plus x. So, generating function for the problem is 1 plus x plus x square bracket square into 1 plus x bracket square. Now, required answer is coefficient of x raised to 4. Now here because these are polynomials we have to perform the multiplication and find out the coefficient. So if we multiply these four brackets we will get 
that the coefficient of x square is 2, 4 and 2 added together is going to be 8. Now, next problem is going to be interesting because we have, there are infinitely many b1s, there are infinitely many b2s, infinitely many b3s and infinitely many dot 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 bn's. Now here, if we are supposed to select r objects out of this multiset, then generating function for b1 will be 1 plus x plus x square and so on for which we have written generating function as 1 minus x bracket raised to minus 1. For b2 similar 1 minus x raised to minus 1 and so on. Hence the generating function for the problem will be 1 plus x plus x square plus dot 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 bracket raised to n which is 1 upon 1 minus x raised to n and hence now here we can find out the answer directly because we have already learned what is the expansion of 1 minus x bracket raised to minus n when n is natural number. So the required answer is going to be the coefficient of x raised to r in the expansion of 1 minus x raised to minus n which we have said n elbow r. So n elbow r is going to be the answer for this question. In particular, in how many ways one can buy 10 ice creams out of 4 flavors? The answer is 4 elbow 10. Here, 10 ice creams one need to buy. So, R is equal to 10 and there are 4 flavors that means B1, B2, B3, B4 and in that set, infinitely many B1s are available, infinitely many B2s are available, infinitely many B3s and infinitely many B4s are available. That means all the four flavors ice cream is available in plenty. So there is no condition. You can buy zero ice creams of a flavor or not, one, two, three and so on. All ten ice creams of one flavor is also fine. So the answer for this question is four elbow ten. Next problem is find the number of ways of distributing R objects into N distinct boxes. This is similar to earlier. So generating function for box number 1 is 1 plus x plus x square plus dot 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 1 minus x bracket raise to minus 1. Similarly, for all the boxes, generating function will be same and hence generating function for the problem is 1 upon 1 minus x bracket raised to n and hence the required answer would be coefficient of x raised to r which is n elbow r. Now, next problem. Find the number of ways of distributing r objects into n distinct boxes so that no box is empty. So additional condition here is no box is empty that means at least one object must be there in that box and the boxes are distinct. So applying generating function theory we can directly say that generating function for box number 1 is x plus x square dot 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 which is x into 1 minus x bracket raised to minus 1. Generating function for box 2 same and so on therefore generating function for this problem will be x plus x square plus dot 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 bracket raised to n which is x raised to n upon 1 minus x bracket raised to n. This is shifting right by n zeros. So generating function is x raised to n into 1 minus x raised to minus n. So x raised to n comes out common sigma r goes from 0 to wherever we want n elbow r x raised to r. So the required answer is going to be the coefficient of x raised to r in the expansion. So if r is less than n, we just cannot achieve it because we have the multiplier x raised to n. So the minimum degree of x in the expansion will be x raised to n. If we want degree lesser than that, it is not available. So if r is greater than or equal to n, the answer for this problem will be n elbow r minus n. Next, each of three boys tosses a die once. 
find the number of ways to get total 14 okay the die has six faces and one two three four five six on each face so generating function for first boy is either you will get one or two or three or four or five or six so x plus x square plus x cube plus x four plus x fifth plus x six stop this is polynomial this is not power series we don't have x seventh and x eighth because it is just not possible so if we take x common out we get one plus x plus x square plus x cube plus x fourth plus x fifth whose generating function we can write as x inside bracket 1 minus x raised to 6 upon 1 minus x now this is the geometric progression formula we are using and we are using here x as our dummy variable we can assume that it is mod x is less than 1 similarly for second and third boy we have just same generating function and hence overall generating function for the problem is x into 1 minus x raised to 6 upon 1 minus x whole bracket raised to 3 which is equal to x cube into 1 minus x raised to 6 bracket cube into 1 minus x bracket raised to minus 3 the 1 minus x raised to 6 bracket raised to 3 can be expanded therefore the generating function for problem is x cube into 1 minus 3x raised to 6 plus 3x raised to 12 minus x raised to 18 1 minus x bracket raised to minus 3 so the required answer is the coefficient of 14 that which we can achieve the corresponding coefficient of x raised to 14 will be 3 elbow 11 minus 3 into 3 elbow 5 okay now if we select one from the from the bracket 1 minus 3x 6 plus 3x 12 minus x raised to 18 we have to select the coefficient of x raised to 11 from 1 minus x bracket raised to 3 which is 3 elbow 11 and if we happen to select x raised to 6 from this big, big bracket so the coefficient of x raised to 6 is minus 3 and we have to look at coefficient of x raised to 5 in the expansion of 1 minus x bracket raised to minus 3 which is 3 elbow 5 therefore the required coefficient of x raised to 14 is 3 elbow 11 minus 3 times 3 elbow 5 one need to spend a little more time on this problem to understand and you can play with it find out what will be the coefficient of x raised to 18 because if all the three boys get 666 then and then only you will achieve x raised to 18 you can find out what should be the coefficient that means number of ways of getting 18 using this generating function our our expression is going to be complicated but we know the answer it is 1 so one need to try it out because if we want 18 we need to consider three terms in the expansion of 1 minus x raised to 6 and then if you really solve those elbow notations and really find out the answer you will get the answer equal to 1 and if you want the sum of all the three faces of three boys greater than 18 then we know it is not possible therefore answer must be zero but you will be surprised that if you really try and calculate the coefficient of x raised to 19 or x raised to 20 or x raised to 21 or any power of x which is greater than 18 you will get the answer every time zero okay let us look at the last problem in how many ways can we fill a bag with six fruits such that subject to condition one is number of apples must be one condition number two is number of bananas must be multiple of five condition three is there can be at most four oranges and condition four there can be at most one mango okay 
so generating function for apple will be 1010 either 0 apples present or 2 apples present or 4 apples present and so on correct so the generating function for that is 1 upon 1 minus x square generating function for bananas will be similarly 1 upon 1 minus x raised to 5 generating function for oranges either 0 oranges are present or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 not more than that so we have to stop so the power series it is not a power series it is polynomial 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus x 4 which is 1 minus x raised to 5 upon 1 minus x and generating function for mangoes 1 plus x so overall generating function for this problem is 1 upon 1 minus x raised to 2 into 1 upon 1 minus x raised to 5 into 1 upon 1 minus x raised to 5 upon 1 minus x into 1 plus x which is after simplification we get 1 upon 1 minus x square which is 1 plus 2x plus 3x square plus 4x cube and so on hence the coefficient of x raised to n is simply x n plus 1 therefore answer for this question is coefficient of x raised to 6 which is 7 so in 7 ways you can fill your bag with 6 fruit subject to these 4 conditions now you might think that this is relatively easy but you will have to spend good amount of time on each and every problem so that you understand and use this for solving counting problems this is very interesting of course this is a basic generating function first level generating functions and we can have several additional complications in the problems and therefore this is very interesting topic as far as olympiads are concerned but i wish to give you the fundamentals this is what it is thank you